Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys are doing okay today and welcome to another episode of our Firebase 3 real-time chat app tutorial. Now today let's take a little bit of a detour and not talk so much about feature implementation, but instead we'll talk about how to actually kind of refactor our code to make it a little cleaner and a little bit more simple to follow. Now, this is actually one of the more interesting things to me. I mean, we can always put views and things onto the screen, but how to actually make our code more readable is something that is uh, really important uh, to me at least. So I'm gonna go over what we will be refactoring today and I'm gonna go through why it's actually really important to do so. So I'm gonna go into Xcode and the area that we want to kind of look at is inside of Chala controller and this input container view right here on line 79. So this input container view is actually responsible for rendering out the bottom area of this chat lock controller here. And we get the uh, bottom left image, the text field, the send button, and also the separator line uh, in between right here. So that is all being rendered from line 79 all the way down to line uh, 125 right here. So the reason why I would um, recommend refactoring this, uh, in other words, I would put all of this code inside of a separate view file uh, because none of this stuff is really that important to the actual controller class. Uh, it's all inside of um, this bottom view area, so it doesn't really need to live inside this controller. And another reason why you would want to clean up your code inside of your controller classes is because if you've been programming in iOS for a while now, you'll notice that your controllers tend to become really, really long. So this class is already, let's see, about 500 lines of code. And if we go back to the input container view right here, this is about um, perhaps 50 lines of code, I would say. So that's about a tenth of the entire controller. So we can do, we can definitely do a lot better by moving all of this code into its own class so that you don't have to uh, look at this code if you are just mainly focusing on the controller's logic. So how would you actually go about doing this is the question. Well, uh, I'm gonna kind of admit that refactoring is kind of scary at first because it's kind of like performing surgery on your code and the refactoring usually um, puts your code in a state where a lot of things are kind of broken in the beginning and then you kind of have to fix it piece by piece. So I'm gonna go through kind of how I would refactor my code if I wanted to extract all of this input area into its own separate view class. So to do so, or to begin, let's create a new file inside of the view group. And I'm going to just click this uh, file, Swift file here. I'm gonna call this chat input uh, container view. And so that's going to be a separate view class, which will first import our import a kit and call this class of, uh, let's see, chat input uh, container view. And this will be a subclass of UI view like that. So this class right here, this UI view, it should almost always override this uh, constructor called uh, init frame. And we have to call a super init frame like that. So with this class available, let's also fix this error right here. This do what Xcode tells you to uh, import or input and you should be okay. So you have this class right here called chat input container view. And if we go back to the chat log controller, uh, what I want to do is instead of using this container view for this input container view, I want to, let's see, let's build a project first. This way I have access to, let's see, uh, chat input container view is this chat input container view class right here. And we can actually use a frame constructor um, that we kind of overrode, overridden inside of this custom class. And what is this frame? Well, it's the same frame as this frame here for this container view. So I'm just going to take this copy and paste it in that rect guy. And I just want to return this chat input 
container view object instead of using all of this code here. So if I run this right now, you're gonna see that it doesn't really do much, but it actually uh, kills off the bottom input container view inside of our chat log controller. So you don't see anything on the bottom anymore because we're just returning this empty class here that's absolutely empty. So what do we want to do um, now that we don't really use this container review anymore? Well, the first thing I can do is to um, just comment that guy out. And then I want to do this right here. So this is the scary part that I was kind of referring to earlier. I want to actually cut all that code for the container view stuff. Uh, I think I can comment that out as well. And having all that code on my clipboard right now, I can uh, paste that in here. And what you'll notice is that the compiler is obviously going to mark all of these um, container views as a uh, compiler error because we don't have access to container view. And what you need to do is just remove the container view from the actual code. And this is because this chat input container view itself is our container view. So I'm gonna do that first and fix all of these red errors. Just remove container view. This is probably the easier step of the fixes. Let's see, let me remove this as well. And uh, what else have we got here? So container view fixes that, fixes this here, this there this there, and I think we should be okay for the container views, except for that right there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, what do I need to do um, now that I have a couple of other error messages left inside of this view? Well, let's take a look at this one right here on line 39, and we're missing this input text field. Um, and this input text field is actually, let's see, where is it? Where are you? So it's actually this uh, variable right here. So what I'm gonna do is cut this as well, go back to the container view class, and I'll paste that in there. Let's see, it's a couple of lines, and paste that in there. So those errors down here have kind of gone away. And the couple of errors that we are seeing now is, let's see, Let's fix this one right here. So this one is trying to assign a UI text view, a few field delegate as self. And we fixed that by just saying UI text field delegate up there. And now the delegate is just fine setting this class as the self. Now these two error messages uh, are kind of strange to fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment it out first I'm gonna try to run, but we're not going to be able to compile because of a couple of reasons. Uh, the first of which is inside of this chat controller, um, chat log controller class, uh, we, we're missing this input text field now inside of this handle send function. And we're also missing text field there. And uh, let's fix that by going back up to this input container view uh, variable. And what we can do is I can, instead of using a generic UI view class, we can use chat input container view right there. And this means that I'm going to use input container view to kind of fix these two errors right here. So handle send, I can just say input container view dot input text field. And then here we'll do kind of the same thing dot text field. And command clicking in here will just get me to the input text field that we kind of cut into our uh, custom chat input view. So having done all of that, you can actually kind of run your code now so that your class kind of um, compiles again and the area on the bottom um, is going to show up um, just like it did before. So this is kind of step one or what I would kind of consider the step one of refactoring your code to be, and it's a pretty big step if you are uncomfortable with uh, kind of performing major surgery on your code and trying to get it to work again. But let's just take a look at Chala controller. And uh, where are we? I wanna go back to input container view. So if I remove all of this code right here, you'll notice that 
the amount of code that we've now saved has it's it's quite dramatic right we no longer set up all this chat area down here inside of the controller and this way our, our code is much easier to follow if um, perhaps someone on your engineering team just joined and they want to fix a bug inside of this class they don't have to uh, or they won't get bogged down in all this setup code that uh, you'll find if you don't perform this refactoring. So the other thing to uh, move on to right here is to actually fix this uh, text area down here. Every time you type in some stuff, you want to actually send the text, right? And the reason why it's not sending is because inside of line 39, uh, we've commented out the line that actually adds the touch up um, action to the send button. So how do we fix this issue right here? That's kind of the question. Well, we can do a couple of things. And uh, I'll show you the easier fix of, of the two. So the way to kind of fix this issue here. So I guess the question is, uh, what is handle send? So this handle send guy actually belongs to chat log controller. And if I type control six handle send, we'll get to this function here, which actually sends off the message with the text coming from this input area. So how do I actually call this function from within this class here? Well, what we will do is we will introduce a reference to this chat log controller up here. So chat log controller B of type chat log controller and uh, inside of chat log controller let's go back to chat input let's see input container view and then we'll get to this here so if I hit build I can actually type chat input container review dot chat log let's see chat log controller uh, if this will come up equals self right there and then we should be okay in terms of the code so I build one more time, we'll get this error again. And what you need to do is uh, this right here. So in order to call a, uh, a selector handle send on an object that is different than self, what you need to do is to actually call it like this. So I'm gonna cut this code here. And inside of this chat log controller, I'm going to use a brace and type did set like that. And I'm gonna paste in that send button like so. So here we're missing the send button. And this is a uh, an easy fix if we just type or just cut this out here and we paste it up here. This means that we have a reference to the send button now. So everything is still working as before. And now we're missing this right here. So what is this guy? Well. What I want to do instead of calling handle send on self, I will do this instead. Send button, add target. And I'll use this chat log controller instead. And the selector will be the same. Uh, selector, let's see, handle send like so. And we'll use touch up uh, inside. So this is still going to be an error. And to fix this, I'll just use chat log controller dot handle send. So that's what we need instead of this right here. So I'm gonna run now and you'll see that the send button will actually call handle send on chat log controller. So let's see if I can get to it. If I put a breakpoint here and try to type something, uh, for example, some message and send, you'll see the breakpoint gets hit and then the actual message will get sent out. So that's how you would change the uh, functionality of what the send button does. And uh, all this code is being executed inside of this new chat input container view now. So I'm gonna remove this line right here and look at this final uh, commented uh, outline on line 36. So what is handle upload tap? Well, if I just copy that and go back to the chat log controller, find this guy, it's actually this action that gets performed whenever you tap in this uh, thumbnail image view on the bottom left. And to fix this, we do exactly the same thing as before. We'll just cut this line out here. 
and uh, we'll paste that in here. And uh, instead of using target of self, we'll use chat log controller. And the action, uh, let's see, the action will also be that, dot that. And so we'll fix this error right here. It's complaining, complaining about the upload image view variable. And uh, let's just take that out from there and get a reference to it by just pasting it up here. So let's see right there. Okay, that looks good. If I run this application now, you'll see that if I tap the image button on the, uh, the bottom left, the upload image button, we can upload images again if we decide to do so. So let's send this image here and I think it'll send out, should be okay. So the last issue is the background of this uh, container view needs to be opaque white. And I'll just do that right here as a background color. Uh, let's see, I can just say dot white color like so, should be fine. You don't really need the uh, static UI color class. And uh, running the application again and clicking into this guy right here, you'll see that the uh, the actual message image view is now behind the opaque white of the chat input container view. So there's uh, some other bit of cleanup work that you can also perform here uh, that I would recommend you guys to do so. And uh, the first of which is to actually take this code out. And so if I just copy that out and uh, Let's see, what should I do? Upload image, view, BF type, UI image, view. Use this brace. And then we can just say, I think we can just copy this and put that in here. Yeah, it looks okay. Return, upload image, view, execute the closure. And uh, we should have the upload image view right there. So what I can do is I can just delete that and uh, all the setup work is actually belonging inside of this initializer code right here. This way your initializer of frame is just a bit cleaner. I don't like setting up all that code inside of this uh, section of the constructor if you don't really have to. So doing that, test message, hit send. So you notice how the enter button doesn't really work either. Um, and uh, the reason is because in chatlock controller, we have this thing called text return, I think. Uh, text field should return. And uh, this really needs to go inside of this chat input container view. So let's just paste that there. And notice how handle send has this error, right? So this needs to call handle send on chatlock controller like so. And this will allow us to actually hit the return button and perform the sending of the text from within our chat log. So perform send using return, enter, message gets entered, and then it gets updated in our uh, chat logs just like that. So nothing too fancy. And if you look at chat log controller now, um, it is a lot simpler in terms of some of the view code that we've eliminated inside of input container view. And this is something that you should definitely get good at. Um, if you haven't received, I guess, formal training from a software engineering organization, you probably won't have this um, skill uh, as much as someone else that has been working at a software uh, company. But this is definitely something that you'll um, use over and over if you want to kind of take your iOS or programming uh, skills to kind of the next level. All right. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you did. Also subscribe to the channel if you want uh, content like this to show up in your YouTube feed. All right, keep on coding, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.